from the CBS Bay Area studios, this is KPIX 5 News. Welcome back. It's just about 6.30. Good morning. I'm Devin Field. And I'm Julie Watson. We'll get started this morning with a check of your forecast. We do have a red flag warning in effect once again. Uh, this time for the North Bay, Napa, Sonoma, Lake Counties today. This red flag warning in effect until 11 o'clock tonight. We're talking hot temperatures, dry conditions, and gusty winds. Temperatures are on the mild side as you head out the door this morning. Mid-60s right now for Concord, 60 in Livermore, 61 in San Jose, and then upper 50s for Oakland, San Francisco, and Santa Rosa to start off your Saturday. Looking for something to do? Fillmore Jazz Festival. Uh, we're talking temperatures in the upper 70s, sunny. But a big transition as you head on to tomorrow from one music festival to another. The Stern Grove Festival Sunday, much cooler. 63, partly cloudy skies. Devin, back over to you. A legal permanent resident of the U.S. is now back with his family after almost three weeks after he was detained by federal immigration agents. 62-year-old Jose Luis Garcia was released from ICE custody last night. It happened hours after an immigration judge dropped his case, saying he never should have been picked up in the first place. Garcia was watering his lawn outside his Los Angeles home earlier this month when agents handcuffed and detained him. Be away from my family for 19 days. It's like killing me little by little. It's just not right. It's just not right. I'm not a criminal. In a statement shortly after Garcia was detained, I cited Garcia's criminal uh, past criminal convictions. His daughter says it was a misdemeanor domestic violence case from 18 years ago and that her father completed his sentence of probation and anger management classes. Garcia is originally from Mexico and has been living in the U.S. for almost 50 years. Well, today, activists plan rallies across the nation to protest the separation of children from their migrant parents at the U.S.-Mexico border. Now, this is the latest in a series of protests against the Trump administration's zero-tolerance policy towards immigrants illegally entering the U.S. Some of those families have since been reunited. Bay Area protests planned today include San Jose City Hall, the Civic Center in San Francisco, Lakeside Park at Lake Merritt in Oakland, in Concord at the Todos Santos Plaza, and in Richmond, outside the West County detention facility. Now, some women and their children also staged a sit-in outside an immigration detention center in Pleasant Hill. A group called Moms Take Action for Immigrant Families organized yesterday's protest. They say two adolescent girls who were separated from their parents at the U.S.-Mexico border are being held at the Pleasant Hill facility. In San Francisco, police are asking for the public's help finding a hit-and-run driver who injured a pedicab driver and a family from Canada that he was driving. Now, police released this video showing a, a champagne-colored Honda Civic driving southbound on the Embarcadero Wednesday afternoon. This is the car suspected of crashing into the pedicab driven by 66-year-old Kevin Manning. He is hospitalized with serious head injuries. Workers in several Bay Area cities will be getting a raise tomorrow. San Francisco's minimum wage will jump from $14 to $15 an hour. Emeryville's wage will hit $15.69, one of the highest in the country. In Belmont, the minimum wage will jump $2 to $12.50. San Leandro and Milpitas will also see bumps. Well, caregivers at a Santa Rosa hospital who help victims of the wildfires say they need help saving their jobs. What do we want? No. Yesterday, workers at Santa Rosa Memorial Hospital protested plans to lay off more than 50 employees. A majority of them are nursing assistants who feed and bathe patients. Many of them say they worked round the clock caring for patients during the October wildfires. Employees are now allowed back into their homes as crews near containment of a grass fire in Concord. The 268-acre fire began yesterday afternoon near Cal and Ignacio Valley Roads. It then spread to the areas of Montecito Roads and Crystal Ranch Drive, threatening homes. Between 200 and 300 people were told to evacuate, but were allowed back about 10.30 last night. Carol Ann Elmore says firefighters gave her and her husband just uh, five minutes to grab what they could and get out. Their belongings included mementos of Elmore's only child who died at the age of two. That was my main priority was to get all his videos, his tapes. I'm going to get emotional, but thank God we have them all. The fire is now 85 percent contained. There are no reports of significant damage to homes or other buildings, although two firefighters suffered minor burns. Investigators believe the fire was started by a pickup that was spewing sparks out of an exhaust pipe. 
Now, meanwhile, firefighters in Lake County are making progress battling the Pawnee Fire. It's now 65 percent contained. The fire has burned more than 13,000 acres since it broke out last Saturday, northeast of Clear Lake Oaks. 22 buildings have burned. Crews say the fire is no longer threatening any other buildings. Happening this morning, a gun buyback event in an effort to reduce gun violence in San Francisco. Police are teaming up with United Players, a group dedicated to violence prevention. Previous buybacks in San Francisco got hundreds of weapons off the streets. Today's event will be held from 8 a.m. until noon at United Players facility on Howard Street. Just in time for the 4th of July, a huge fireworks bust in the Central Valley. Seven tons of illegal fireworks were seized from a house in Stockton in one of the largest busts the state has ever seen or has seen in years. The hall in includes mortars, Roman candles and other illegal explosives estimated to be worth about $100,000. Police say 40 year old Stephen Clark was selling the fireworks on Craigslist. He's jailed tonight on more than $2 million bail. In Sonoma County, there's a debate over whether fireworks should even be permitted anymore. So-called safe and sane fireworks are currently legal in four cities in Sonoma. Those are fireworks intended for personal use, but some are now calling for an end to all fireworks sales and use in the county after last year's huge wildfires. Fire officials say the area remains vulnerable. Thanks for spending a little time with Uncle Vern here as I got a little baseball for you up top. You want to see how the Giants followed up a 7-3 and three homestand like this? Hey, called up for the fourth time of the season, Austin Slater. And man, did he do damage at Arizona last night. Found some real estate in the second. This one good enough to bring on Buster Posey. At the time, the Dodgers were losing, so the Giants had a huge chance to gain ground in, in the division. Seventh inning, tie game, no problem. Slater again was clutch. Brandon Crawford was the go-ahead run, and the Giants won it 2-1. to one. They're just a game behind the second-place Dodgers, and now four-and-a-half behind front-running Arizona. A's fans and their canines against visiting Cleveland. Look, the A's won again. That's five in a row. That's Chris Davis padding the lead to two to nothing. They just finished an eight-and-two road trip. And boy, and Jed Lowry, look at this guy. He just read hot. What yard in the eighth inning? A's have won 11 of his last 13. Season high seven games over a 500 record. That's 45 and 38. Final from Friday night, three to one. At this side of the NBA on free agent weekend, Warriors apparently want to lock in Steve Kerr for a while. He reportedly is in the last stages of finalizing an extension of his contract that will make him one of the highest paid coaches in the NBA. Just finished the fourth year of a five-year, $25 million deal. I'll just let your imagination run wild as the untold riches he will be due when the ink dries after he signs. That's enough. Have a great Saturday, and I'll see you around.